Hi and welcome to another class on IBPS. We deal with English for IBPS. It's been quite some time since we've had an English class, right? So, uh, good morning to everyone present here. It's a fine Saturday morning, okay? And uh, today we will be dealing with vocabulary, okay? So, one of the most important parts of language, remember, is the vocabulary, the set of vocabulary words that are used in the, in the language, okay? And how you frame sentences with these words, that's very important and the rules, uh, you know, the uh, framing rules, that's your grammar part, okay? So, knowing the right words in the right context, that is very, very, very important, okay? So, it is very primary that you understand what means what when learning a language, okay? So, even if you make minor mistakes in your language, in your grammar part of it, it's still okay because, uh, you know, people tend to understand even if you make grammatical errors. But if you run out of words to express yourself, that's a real problem, okay? All right, so we move on to our book suggestion for the day, okay? So, uh, in recent times, I have been um, uh, focusing on English, uh, Indian English writers, okay? So, why is that so? I am an old timer who probably reads more of uh, English and American authors and then of course, I stick to the commonwealth, that's the pecking order second uh, uh, layer, okay? So, along with this, uh, you know, you have your Indian writers. Very few Indian writers have been able to, you know, uh, progress. And one of those writers in the recent times, that's Paul Kalanidhi, who tragically died of cancer at a very young age. And his book, When Breath Becomes Air, is his journey through cancer, okay? It's very touching, it's extremely emotional and uh, slightly heavy on the heart. Nevertheless, it's a brilliant book, okay? So, check it out when you have the time. So, a quick recap on what we did the previous class. We have uh, looked into reading comprehension and we looked at a uh, practice passage and the questions that followed it. I gave you tips and uh, pointers on how to focus on uh, certain types of questions, okay? The inference, implication, uh, specific data match questions, so on and so forth, okay? Next, we come to sentence completion, okay? So, that is the topic for today. So, what do you do with vocabulary? Of course, when learning a language to speak, to write, that, that's the, you know, as I said, the primary thing to learn the words first, okay? So, in your IBPS examination, remember that your sentence completion and your uh, RC passage vocabulary questions will be based on your vocabulary, of course, okay? So, uh, number one, what are synonyms and antonyms? Synonym meaning, antonym, the opposite meaning, okay? So, uh, tall, short, that's your antonym and um, tall and probably your word like exalted, lofty, those are related. I wouldn't call them exactly synonymous, but they are related to each other, okay? Um, so, remember that when you deal with sentence completion questions, this is nothing but your fill up the blank question. This is something that you've seen since uh, primary school, okay? The very first exam or your cycle test, you would have seen fill up the blank kind of questions, okay? Remember that when it comes to sentence completion, it's not just your vocabulary that is going to help you. Now, I think I'm pretty good with the English language, but there are words that leave me completely confused. I have absolutely no idea what the word means what do I do, okay? So, all of us have such moments, okay? How frequently? That's the question, okay? So, um, 
remember that in such panic situations, we should all do, uh, you know, run an algorithm. Number one, you know, step number one of the algorithm, try to puzzle out the meaning from the sentence, from the context, okay. For example, when I say, uh, when I give you a sentence and then I talk about uh, medical terminology, okay, and there is a word that I do not understand, I kind of take it for granted that it has to be something related with medical terminology, correct, okay, doctor speak. So, I try to do that with every word that I find puzzling. I puzzle out the meaning from the context. So, this is why context is very, very, very important, okay. Now, there are times when you would recognize part of the word, the rest of the word you have no idea, okay. So, that happens when you are aware of the root of the word, okay. For example, um, let us look at this. C O G N just a sec. Okay. So C O G N this is the root word for no. Okay. Sense it. Uh, no. Okay. Knowledge no. From this you get cognizant. Cognizance. Cognizant. and then there is cognition, okay. Now, you would have heard of this cognizant, okay, because of the namesake company. Uh, cognition, probably not, but from this C O G N, you understand part of the word. From that, you cannot always puzzle it out and given the context, of course, okay. So, try to, uh, you know, look at a word as a culmination of the root words that it uses, okay. So, that should give you a good idea of what the word probably means, okay. Then, uh, how to build a vocabulary? Please read, please read the right books. That is the reason I give you a book suggestion and then start with the class every day, okay. So, it is uh, very important that you read not just to know the language, reading is an intellectually enriching experience, okay. Uh, I repeat, please start reading if you do not read already. Now, we, uh, uh, we discussed about finding the meaning of a word with the given, uh, you know, uh, root words, correct. So, let us look at this, okay. The first word that we see is pachyderm. Derm is the root word for anyone? Are there any comments yet? Not yet. Okay. All right. So, derm is the root word for skin. And this means thick thick skin, that is the transliteration, okay. But does it mean thick skin? Maybe. But typically when you use the, the term pachyderm, it means elephant or in some cases it could mean hippopotamus, okay. Uh, so, it refers to the group of animals that are very thick skinned, okay. Now, because we look at derm, let us also look at other words that you might know. Uh, with the root word derm. You have dermis, then there is epidermis. Remember your biology lessons where you uh, study about the layers of skin? Epidermis, dermis, they are layers of skin, okay. Then there is dermatology, okay, study of skin. If you have any skin issues, you go to a dermatologist, a skin doctor, okay. Next, we look at behavior of 
ok. These are animal behavior traits ok. Uh, bovine is to do with cattle. Look at this example, you know what? You eat like bovine cattle, you have the tendency to chew your food, you ruminate and that is a very bovine characteristic, I can say that. What do I mean? If you notice very carefully, cattle tend to keep chewing their food, ok. The scientific reasons are, uh, I mean as far as I know they have two stomachs they just uh, you know uh, ingest what they just take in whatever they uh, find food ok and then they bring it back to their mouth from one stomach they ruminate, ruminate is to chew ok. You can also say ruminating in my thoughts, he ruminated uh, about the proposal, took his own sweet time and then said yes ok. So, that is a very bovine characteristic ok to do with cows, buffaloes, cattle ok. Then lupine, any Harry Potter fans here? When I say lupine what comes to your mind? Professor Lupin ok. Uh, Professor Lupin was a werewolf correct. That is why JKR has named Professor Lupin thus and that is an epiphany moment. So, lupine is wolf like characteristics, then canine, canine all of us know it is to do with dog like behavior. Then there is feline to do with cat, do you remember the zodiac sign that sounds similar to this word? He's oin, he's ease, correct? And the symbol of that zodiac is the fish. This is fish like. Vulpine is fox like. So, when you call someone vulpine, it means that he is very sly because the fox is known for sly behavior, correct? Then, asinine is to do with as donkey ok and when you say someone is very asinine it means that he does not have much here ok he is stupid and that is asinine behavior ok. So, uh, inane is another word that means the same almost the same next we go to look at this set what is common here ambivalent, ambiguous, ambidextrous ok. Now, when something is ambiguous or ambivalent it means that it is vague not very clear. What does ambi have to do with that? The root word ambi means both two sided ok. So, uh, look at this example, you know what uh, the, the questions were not uh, properly written. Uh, in some questions I could see that two or more options could fit in as the answers. So, there was great ambivalence, ambiguity, they were very ambiguous ok. So, where any vague unclear uh, you know trait that is ambiguous, ambidextrous. Now, we have already seen in our previous classes that dexterous is to do with skill ok. So, when you call someone very skillful you mean to say that he is dexterous, ambidextrous both skilled do not take it literally it means one can write with both hands. Do you know of anyone who can write with both hands? Apparently, Da Vinci could ok. Leonardo da Vinci uh, it is said that he could write, he could draw with one hand and write with the other at the same time ok. Then there is this set of words idiosyncrasy, idiopathic, 
an idiom. Idio is the root word for on its own without any external reason. Okay. When you talk about an idiopathic disease or idiopathic occurrence, it is typically used in medical terminology. Uh, why do I have migraine? It is just idiopathic, it really does not have a reason. Okay. Or a chondromalacia patella, what is the cause? Nothing, it is just idiopathic. So, it just occurs as such without any external reason, that is idiopathic on its own. Idiosyncrasy is a peculiar behavior that you have. Okay. For example, uh, how many of you have watched um, Everybody Loves Raymond or Seinfeld? If you have not, please go back and watch Seinfeld first followed by Everybody Loves Raymond. Seinfeld is one of the most intellectual TV shows that people have ever seen in our generation. Okay. It is a show about nothing and nothing is extremely intellectually presented. Okay. So, uh, coming to this, Seinfeld is known for his idi uh, idiosyncrasy. He is extremely clean. Okay. He is a germaphobe of the highest order. He has several idiosyncrasies, peculiar behavior aspects. Okay. Now, uh, in Everybody Loves Raymond again, Raymond's brother. Rob has this peculiar idiosyncrasy of eating everything after the food touches his chin. Okay. It just looks great on screen, you should watch it. Okay. Uh, anyhow, idiosyncrasy as I said, it is a peculiar habit. Okay. I keep saying okay all the time, that is probably my idiosyncrasy. Then idiom. Now, an idiom is a phrase, for example, turn the tables. Okay. When you say turn the tables, you do not go, you know, typically when you use the uh, uh, idiom, you do not literally go and turn the tables, you know, furniture. No, not happening that way, but it means that you go against. Okay. So, when something, a phrase of some sort has its own meaning in the English language, it is called an idiom. Then L U C L U M, these are the root words for light. Okay. So, typically when you see L U C or L U M, remember it has something or the other to do with light. Okay. So, you have illumination, this is something that you would know already. Lucid means clear, please explain it to me lucidly. Lucent, illuminating, luster, okay. the diamond has luster. Pellucid, this is again lucid, nothing but lucid. Translucent, so you have heard of three words in your uh, physics optics classes opaque, transparent and anything in between is translucent. Opaque is something that does not let light pass through, transparent all light passes through that layer, anything in between is translucent. Okay. It is not opaque, it is not transparent, it is translucent. Elucidate is to explain, explain very clearly, circumlucid, you know light from all sides, circum is the root word for all sides. So, let us look at the circum root also. There is circumspect. Now, spect is the root word for see or look, which is why you have inspect, spectacle, spectacles. Okay. So, when I mean my glasses, I do not wear them anymore. But yeah, uh, old habits die hard. I was reaching for my non-existent glasses. Spectacles, that is what you wear for better vision. When you say something is a great spectacle, it means that it is a great sight. Okay. Circumspect, look around on all sides. Then there is circumnavigation, circumlocution. Then uh, circumspection as I said, 
okay circumference so next we have a harry potter spell that you would all know lumos okay so this is latin for light so whenever harry goes into the dark what's the first thing he says with his wand lumos meaning light up nox is the opposite nox as a spell in the harry potter universe means okay let this be dark okay i want darkness to uh, envelop this place that's nox nox is the root word the root um, latin word for night okay so it's night in uh, english if you look at it closely not in german so all the uh, you know saxon languages the european languages are interconnected that way okay so it all comes from the latin word nox from nox what do you remember to do with night there is nocturnal meaning owls are nocturnal animals they are active only at the uh, only during the night then there is equinox meaning equi is equal nox so there is uh, what do you call day and night happen equally in equal intervals so now we go to the previous class contest question we are having an overdose of uh, harry potter pardon me for that and fans you can thank me for that look at this october arrived spreading a damp i'm sorry october arrived spreading a damp dash over the grounds now look at this october is known for the start of winter okay and there is damp here over the grounds and dash into the castle so it, when it's damp when it's damp and it's october you're looking for chill as i said context is what matters okay so chill is what goes here over the grounds and dash into the castle okay now look at this spreading so i'm looking for another ing word here parallelism rule okay look at all the words here pouring ing word pouring into the castle that's your answer here madam pompre the nurse was kept busy by a sudden dash of colds so you are looking for a word that means surge spike series okay look at spate spate means exactly these a sudden spate of colds sudden occurrence of colds among the staff and students her pepper of portion worked dash i am looking for an adverb here what do i do when i am looking for adverbs i typically look for words that end with ly there done worked instantly though it left the drinker smoking at the ears for several uh, hours afterward jenny weasley who had been looking pale was dash into taking some by percy i'm looking for a verb here okay and with into it makes an adverbial phrase okay so look at the verbs you are left with i'm left only with two bullied that's the verb bullied into the steam pouring from under her vivid hair gave the this is all you're left with and that's a noun gave the impression that her whole head was on fire look at how great the narrative style of jk rowling is if this does not make you read harry potter i don't know what else can so now we go to our contest time go ahead good luck
Okay, so I hope you got that right. We will of course be discussing this contest question in the next class. Now we move on to exercise. Okay, so with exercise with sentence completion, remember that it does take time because you have to look at all the options, figure out which one uh, plugs the uh, blank perfectly. Okay, so let's look at the first exercise question. There is the thought that only the poor and less educated people use slang, but this idea is blank. What is slang? Non-standard language. Okay. So uh, today the youth typically uses words like phrases like "it ain't no good." Okay, that is slang. Grammatically, it's incorrect, right? Number one, ain't. That is not, uh, you know, standard English. No good, ain't no good, ain't and no double negation. That again is not accepted. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, you know explanation for the term slang. There is the thought that only the poor and less educated use slang. Something else that you need to notice and focus on with sentence completion questions are the conjunctions. Here it is a contrast indicator. So if you have a contrast indicator, remember these two clauses of phrases should contrast each other, but this idea is dash. So I mean to say something that you know gives the entire, gives the idea that it is not just the poor and less educated people who use slang, very much true. Okay, unfortunately. So look at this. I'm looking for a word that means incorrect. I can figure that out without looking at the options. Look at this. Accurate is the opposite of incorrect. I eliminate that. Popular has nothing to do with correct or incorrect. Erroneous, yes, this means incorrect. Okay, so this is a very strong contender as of now, but we will also look at the other options to figure out if something else can also fit in. Then there is widespread, widespread popular almost mean the same and it has nothing to do with incorrect. Ineffectual meaning not effective, again nowhere close. Okay. So even this question uh, is an example of you know uh, an instance where even without looking at the options. You have a fair idea from the context of the uh, sentence about what you are going to look for. You just look for, uh, you know, you mentally take a note of what should, uh, uh, you know, come in the blank and then look for that word of the synonyms. Easy peasy. Any problem here? Next question The commander dash his order to attack when he saw the white flag raised by the enemy sailors. Okay. Now remember that context is very, very, very important. I can't tell you uh, that enough. Okay. Now the white flag is symbolism for peace. Okay. So during a war when someone raises the white flag, it means that they are looking for peace, they are not looking to fight anymore, it could mean surrender, peaceful surrender. Okay. So uh, ethically speaking, what is the commander supposed to do when the other side wants to peacefully surrender? He needs to stop attack, correct? That is what I understand. Yeah. So, this has to do with stopping the attack. Any problem there? No, right? He was relieved that he could bring an end to the, okay. So, what is going on here? Battle of some sort. So, I am looking for a word that means stop here and here it should mean battle of some sort. So, I have my options, but I am not even looking at it. I have already decided these are the kind of words that I should be looking for. 
reiterated he does not reiterate the attack he wants to stop it reiterate is to repeat ok. So, you are looking for something that is completely opposite. So, I am not even uh, looking at the next word hostilities not interested because a I eliminate because the first word is definitely wrong countermanded and fighting countermand to go counter to go against ok. So, this is right it sounds like uh, you know the word that we are looking for he countermanded his order meaning he went against his order fighting in battle mean the same. So, this is a strong contender commandeered he did not commandeered he did not commandeer his attack he said stop. So, eliminate renounced he renounced his order give up renounce is to give up even assuming that this is right look at this hiatus hiatus means temporary stop ok. For example, um, I put my teaching on hold took a hiatus and went on a 15 day trek to the Himalayas you get the point ok. A hiatus is a gap of some sort another word that means the same is dichotomy. almost the same it means gap, but it use it is used in a very different context ok. So, this is wrong then confirmed no he did not confirm his attack he went against eliminate I am not looking any further. So, B is your answer any questions here easy again. Now, look at this many biologists have attempted to dash the conditions on earth before life evolved in order to answer questions about the dash of biological molecules ok. So, biologists scientists of some sort they are looking to dash the conditions ok before life evolved. So, you are looking at a time period. So, I assume that scientists are looking to create recreate conditions I am looking for a word that means recreate here ok. Then about the dash of biological molecules this I, I have absolutely no idea ok. I am unable to take a call on what kind of a word can possibly fill the blank here. So, without further thought I go to the options mimic possible mimic recreate there is a slight semblance ok about the fitness of biological molecules fitness of molecules does not make any contextual sense. So, this does not look like a contender, but I might revisit it later because mimic seems to fit in standardize standardize the conditions no ok. So, it has nothing to do with mimic recreate etcetera replicate yes. I am looking to replicate conditions within the laboratory quite possible about the reactions of biological molecules quite possible it is a contender. Now, look at this the conditions of earth before life evolved in order to answer questions about blah 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 ok. So, reactions and the origin of life there is no uh, uh, you know connect. Nevertheless, I leave it as a contender we move simulate simulate means recreate or mimic ok. So, that is a very strong contender for the first blank no doubt there origin yes before life evolved ok. So, this is the key word here ok. So, scientists are trying to recreate conditions before life evolved on earth to find out how life form started origin origin of life start of life form ok. So, this is a very strong contender nevertheless let us also look at the other option ameliorate ameliorate and evolution. Now, I want to look at uh, the word ameliorate ok ameliorate means soften ok um, soften is definitely not the word that you are looking for. So, I eliminate this this is your answer, but because we are doing a vocabulary class 
Melly is the root word for soft. From this you get melody, mellifluous, mellifluous is nothing but melodious, flows uh, uh, melodiously, flu has to do with flow. Okay. Then ameliorate the word that you saw right here. Okay. Then there is mollycoddle. Okay. Associated word, it means to you know you uh, be very gentle and very loving with your child. Okay. So, ameliorate this comes from the root word melly. Now, there is something else that is typically associated with this that is the contrast. A, okay. You have heard of the word exacerbate, correct? exacerbate is to is the opposite of ameliorate it means to worsen this this is to soften and this is to worsen the given condition okay now assur this is the root word for harsh or bitter to make it very harsh exacerbate is to make it worse correct then there is acrid the acrid smell of burning plastic very bitter, very harsh. Then there is acerbic. His acerbic tongue got him into trouble. Okay. So, uh, acerbic again is very bitter, bitter tongue. So, that is about ameliorate, exacerbate. So, with this we come to the summary. Okay. Summary again, we uh, let us look at certain words that you should know and typically when you look at banking related questions, they pick passages from banking related topics. That is not a, uh, you know, that is not a surprise. I have been telling you that for a long time. What are the words that you typically, uh, you know, look for in banking related topics? Economy commerce, credit, debit, fidelity, trust. Okay. Now, what is credit? Cred is the root word for trust. You give someone money trusting that it would be paid back. Okay. That is why you give credit. Okay. So, trust, credit, fidelity is another word that means the same. Another word for trust is believe, correct? I believe in you, I trust you, I believe in America. Why do I say I believe in America? What is the pop culture, pop culture reference that you can think of? The Godfather. The very first statement, the very first, uh, uh, you know, line that we hear in the Godfather is, I believe in America, said by Bonacera. Okay. Anyhow, then, trust, credibility, meaning trustworthiness, credulous, meaning believable, then incredulous, okay, the opposite, credible sources of information, believable, okay. then incredible, unbelievable. Okay. So, th all these are words that have to do with the word, with the root word cred. Okay, so uh, let us close the class with a quick summary on what we have done today. We have done sentence completion with uh, focus on vocabulary, learning vocabulary and how you can improve your vocabulary by learning root words. Okay, then um, with this we close the class and uh, for 
passport members, there is of course the extra bonus of 10 CPP questions. Today's CPP questions are slightly interesting, okay. They are, uh, they deal with very current topics and I picked just the right stuff for you. Brothers, the CPP is a set of 10 questions that we have picked uh, in order to test your application skills of whatever you have learnt in class today, okay. So, the CPP is very expertly done and uh, the aim of that CPP is to give you enough practice so that you do very well with that concept, okay. So, share your CPP uh, passport members, have a great, uh, have great fun with that, okay. Good luck, see you then, bye.